So it's nice and chilly in the garage today, but what you're going to do is you're going to start by sitting down on the ground. Uh, find enough space that you'll be able to lay down onto your back. And we're going to start with what we call a 90 degree Y. And the goal of this movement is to really help you be able to reach overhead without arching your back. So a lot of times in, in swimming, if you're really reaching and you have to really start arching your back, you're actually just not getting as powerful of a, of, of a pull once you come out of that position. So all you're going to do, make sure you can see me, but you're going to lay down on your back, heads down on the ground. I want your knees and hips at roughly a 90 degree angle. So you go ahead and get there. And then you're just going to be trying to touch your thumbs to the ground while making a Y with your arms. So like the letter Y. So we're just reaching down, nice touch to the ground, and back up. I want you to complete 20 repetitions. So go ahead and start doing them. And you can just listen to me as you're doing them as I kind of explain some different things here. The big key, the reason we have our legs off the ground, this helps press your low back into the ground. So there shouldn't be any arch in your low back. You should really feel this reach overhead and you might feel like you want to arch, but with your legs off the ground, we're really holding everything into position. I want you to actually think about bracing your abs. So almost like someone's about to drop a bowling ball from the ceiling down on your stomach. I want you to think about pressing those abs into the ground as you're doing this. That's going to help you hold yourself in proper position as you reach overhead. So if you're feeling some sort of arch forming, if you feel like you could slide something under your back, really think about tucking everything down, nice strong core, low back firm to the ground as you're reaching overhead. We're doing 20 repetitions, so you should be almost there, a couple left, and then we're going to move on to the next exercise. But I like this one because it really helps teach you how to reach without arching your low back. Because in swimming, the one thing that starts to happen is if you're always arching and then you go into a flip turn, you start to really tighten up your low back. So if you're always in this arch position and then you try to curl into a flip turn, your low back really tightens up and seizes up uh, and that doesn't feel very good, right? That's not, that's not very comfortable. It's not something we really, really enjoy to experience. So we want to avoid that as best as possible. Moving on. If you're close to 20 repetitions, go ahead and finish them out and just listen as we're going. The next thing, shoulders uh, rely on rotation. So your mid-back is really responsible for rotation. If you're tight in your mid-back, you start to really arch with your low back to try to help rotation. So we need to make the low back stable and the mid-back needs to be able to rotate, flex and extend and all those good things that we're looking for from the stroke. So the next thing, hands are going under the so, uh, shoulders, knees are under the hips. You're going to lightly put one hand on your neck. So I don't want you pulling your neck at all, it's just lightly touching here. I want you to try to touch elbow to elbow, and then elbow to ceiling. Elbow to elbow, elbow to ceiling. And you're rotating through your middle of your back. I want you to think about really rotating through the middle of your back. You're going to do 10 repetitions on each side. And then just listen to me as I'm talking here as you're completing your repetitions. I want you to think about keeping your hips as still as you can. So I don't want to see your hips kind of sliding back and forth as you're doing this exercise. You're really just rotating up, trying to get that elbow down to your other elbow and then up nice and high toward the ceiling. Rotating nice control. We're doing 10 on each side. Just nice and steady. So if you are unable to rotate through your mid back, you put more pressure on your shoulder to get the job done. That's when you start shrugging up towards your ears. You start getting in the shrug position. That's when neck pain, things like that can happen. So we want to avoid that. We want to avoid having to go here to get that extra little range of motion that we can get from rotating and reaching. All right, it's different when we have that rotate and reach versus shrug and reach okay there you go nice big opening doing 10 on each side try to keep your hands right under your shoulders and your knees right under your hips nice and controlled rotation 
If you feel any tension, I know I mentioned, I mentioned this yesterday, whenever you feel tension, don't hold your breath. Okay, we don't wanna hold our breath when we're doing that. Whenever you feel any sort of tension, I want you to just breathe and use your breath to loosen up that tension. All right, that's kind of, uh, you know, it might seem backwards in terms of when you feel tension, you tense up even more. But that's a point that you need to remember to breathe, okay? And breathing helps increase mobility pretty quickly. All right, so it looks like we're almost all about done there. The next one we're going to go into, you're going to lay on your side. So this one, I want you to be very careful of what we're doing. Uh, no extra assistance with this one. Uh, I know you might not have a pillow today or a foam roller or anything, but you could put something under your head if you wanted to, to hold yourself up. I want you to try to drop your hand down one way and then dropping your hand back the other way. So one repetition is down and back. We're gonna go 10 on each side. I want your elbow directly off of your shoulder. And I want your two shoulders on top of each other. So I don't want you kind of rotated back like this. I want shoulders on top of each other, elbow coming right off from your shoulder. So we're going down and back. And you can see I have my off hand just resting on my arm. It's just keeping it out of the way. It helps me keep my elbow grounded so I'm not too worried about it lifting off the ground at any point. All right, and you're just going back and forth. We're doing 10 on each side so you can switch whenever you're ready. What I don't wanna see, sometimes you'll see people push down in this position. Uh, that's going too far. If you have to push and you can't do it naturally, there's a chance you can start causing some pain to develop here. If you go to physical therapy or an athletic trainer, they might provide the assistance, that's different. Um, in terms of you providing the assistance, Sometimes as an athlete, you go too far and causes a little bit of pain. So I like to see what you can do without any extra assist to get there. So we're just going 10 on each side, nice and steady. Once you're ready, you're switching to the other, other side. So that's called a shoulder range of motion exercise. I just call it shoulder wrong in your program. That's a great way to work on some of that high elbow position that you're seeing in the water. So you think about it, you're kind of pivoting around your elbow which happens a lot in the sport of swimming. So that's a great one to add in. So I'll give you a few more seconds here to just kind of finish out where you're at and just keep listening even if you're completing your repetitions as you go. The last exercise we're going to do, now that we've gone through a lot of range of motion, the last one's going to be about activation. But the key is if you go super fast with this one, it's just not going to give you the same value. So with all of these exercises, you're going pretty slow. It's just a nice slow tempo. Slower allows smaller muscles to activate. When you're going faster, your body likes to bypass for some bigger muscles, just because that's how we're programmed. Our bigger muscles can produce more force. So if we're going fast, fast equals force, they wanna to go to the bigger muscles. But when we slow things down, it shows where some of the weaknesses can be and where we need to work on some things. So we kind of tear it down to build back up. And if we can work on those small muscles and make sure everything's stable, then when it's time to go fast, they're able to help a lot more with the whole process. So the last one you're going to do, you're down on the ground on your stomach. Arms are gonna start straight out overhead. Okay, and then you're gonna pull your elbows back to your side. Okay, so your hands never touch the ground. Reaching overhead, pull your elbows back to your side. Reaching out, if you want to, take it a little further into a streamlined position. I'm totally, totally cool with that. You're gonna go 10 repetitions with the elbows bending to the side. And then we're going to go 10 repetitions with the arms straight, touching the side of your legs. So reaching, your chest stays off the ground the whole time. Hands stay off the ground the whole time. You're going 10 of each. Remember, nice and slow. If you're going super quick, it's really not gonna do anything. So you're going 10, elbows bent, 10 with the arms straight. And what this is doing is it's really working through that range of the motion of the shoulder girdle, especially your shoulder blade or your scap in particular. And we're really working those small muscles and working on stability. For this whole thing, you can go through three rounds on a daily basis. I usually try to hit two or three rounds, honestly, while I'm watching TV. Uh, it's one of those things, I just hop down on the floor, 
work on a couple different exercises, work on a little bit of mobility, a little bit of stability. And as you can tell, your shoulder might feel a little bit warmed up after just doing one set of that. You know, if you do two or three, you're really getting in some high quality work. And it's just, you know, adding to the equations, adding to your progress over time. And honestly, it took us, you know, 10 minutes to get through one round. And that was me talking a lot, where normally if you're flowing through this, you could probably get through two rounds in 10 minutes, okay? And the key is to make this a daily part of your training. Uh, shoulders, especially in swimming, super important to take care of. It's way easier to do this daily than try to catch up on the weekends. And what I mean by that is, if you take 10 minutes a day, it's going to be more potent than taking an hour on the weekend. So I highly advise you, even if you, you know, you're done practice and you just want to work out some kinks or you, know, you wake up in the morning, you have a few minutes just to kind of get ready to roll for an early morning practice, these are great exercises to add in on a daily basis to get a little bit more out of your shoulders and you know, be ready to roll for whatever is coming up next. And you know, late in the season, especially as we get further and further along and that season and volume continues to increase, this becomes even more important because eventually, even with the best programming and everything, at some point, shoulders just get tired, right? It's a lot of volume going through the shoulders. So if you get out ahead of this at the beginning of your season, and establish this good routine, it's going to help you a lot more as you go through your season.